All right, so day one is just making the jig. Now, the assembly notes are in here. It's got the part name, the part piece, the jig is all inch and a half square tubing. The lengths are covered so you don't get a free set of plans. And then your notes on where to position them are right here, along with your part guide and a different view to show this gap. Now remember, we're stretching this by three inches. So J1 and J2 are gonna get cut three inches longer. I'm gonna notate that here. Of course, since we're lengthening essentially the roof and the floor, uh, these need to have the same extension you put on those. Now, if you're just building this uh, straight up and not trying to stretch it, just follow as advertised. And I wrote the plans um, so that this bar will be measured the same way. You don't have to add anything to the actual instructions. Uh, like this crossbar is like nine inches forward of J4 and J6 is, I don't know, 12 inches back from J3. So that's all gonna stay the same and you're not gonna have to remeasure anything. You're just gonna make sure everything's square. Now we just cut all these to length and assemble it. Now, speaking of square, uh, if you're a first time builder or you've always wanted to build something like this and you're too uh, intimidated by it, uh, don't be. This is actually uh, not incredibly difficult to build. It's actually kind of easy. So you start with the jig, which is square tubing. So all you do is measure it correctly, um, make your ends cut nice and square, and it's easy to assemble. It's a great way to get started in a build like this. So starting out, you're just taking your pieces and just making a big square. Now here we go, a perfect square and a perfect start to a nice square chassis, which is what you want. If you tried to build something without a jig or an alignment table, which I don't have, uh, I'd much rather build a jig than have a big giant table in here, to be honest. It's going to make your build so much easier. Even if you're not building one of these, uh, try to figure out a way to make a jig to make all your stuff just lay down and have the exact measurements you want. It's gonna make your notches fit together. It's gonna make your cross members tighter. Uh, it, it's huge to building chassis. So a lot of questions I get are about dimensions. Now this has been a common question since I've started building these. Now the dimension is in the pieces, right? So to have like a spec sheet with everything laid out with dimension would be information overload. Like as you see, you cut this tube to a length, you cut these tubes to a length, and then you make a square. To give you the dimension is, is, is kind of pointless because the dimension is the pieces. J8 is your first cut wrapper. And it's a pretty easy one because it's on square tubing. You basically just cut this out. I like to leave a little, little tail, make it easier to tape. Now, if you're using a notcher, you don't need to cut this out exactly. You can just do that. All right, you'll see on here it says seven inches to the end. Put a mark at seven inches. I fold it just to make it easy. Center it, line it up with that seven inches. That little tail we made. Tuck it under, and there you go. You've got a full notch. Grab your piece of tape, tape over the seam and to the bar. Now, one and a half inch tubing is gonna sit in here, so we're gonna use one and a half inch hole saw. So we just bring it over to our notcher. Now this is a Rogue Fab notcher. This is what turned me on to Rogue Fab in the first place because this notcher 
makes notching incredibly easy. Incredibly easy. Lock it in. All right, the best advice I've seen with cutting metal of any kind to include notching is that the heat leaves with the chips. All right, so if you're cutting slow at a high speed, you're just heating up the blades on your hole saw. Um, so basically you want to cut it as fast as you can without bogging down the machine or chipping your teeth. All right. Slow is not better when it comes to cutting metal. Ideally you want a slow head speed and a lot of pressure. Um, and you can adjust that with the force you put in. When you hear the motor starting to bog down, you see chips flying. That's exactly where you want it. All right, now the notcher is definitely gonna leave some sharp edges, especially on this because of how it's cut. I'm not above using a hand file to just get rid of some of that. All right, so now is our first introduction into magnetized angle finders. Um, if you want to make your build easier, uh, not necessarily more successful, it's gonna be successful, but easier, you should invest in some of these. I mean, you can check it this way and get it tacked in. Look at that. But these things, I love them. I don't know how I did anything before I found them. Now I can just tip it, have a live view of my exact angle while I'm tacking it in place. That, so I'll, I'll know it's going to be absolutely perfect. Check that out. Instant feedback. Now just... All right, now for these front two pieces that are at an angle, those are your caster angles, um, and it's built into these front blocks, but we have to notch this so it goes around the tube. Uh, that's what made it a little easier to assemble. Now there's these notch wrappers that you put on there, and it shows you cutting the whole thing, and you can do that and it'll still work, but you can also take a piece of tube, line it up, at that matched angle, you can see where it breaks right there. You can put that on there. And you can just draw, draw a line around that. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna notch it around another piece instead of having a big wide open gap. It'll work just fine either way. I've done it both ways and it, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's a little, little cleaner maybe if you do this. All right, so the biggest question on the front end of the jig, and everybody's been successful. Um, this is just to cover common questions that, that I get personally. Now you can see that I cut both the forward pieces in different ways, and I'm gonna show you that they both fit just fine. The biggest question I get is on these two specific pieces right here. Now these are the caster blocks, and they're used to set the caster angle. And the question is, where did they go? The answer is that they go edge to edge. The reason for that is because I didn't want you to have to do a miter cut on this. If it sat like that, you'd have to do a miter cut, and that's not fun. So they just sit edge to edge, and that sets your angle. So we'll get both those in place. Now, obviously, these get centered. So they got to come out a little bit. We get centered up here. The other one is, does this sit on top? It doesn't matter. Um, it's just a distance. It's just to set the distance. Now I've marked this for center. So I'm just gonna slide these there and you can see it doesn't matter where they sit. 
I'm going to put that on the edge. Put this on the edge. And then this goes back here to square it up. That easy. Now, you can see that this is just a tack. You're going to get a little more meat on this one. But this sits flat, so it doesn't need to, to hold everything together. And plus, you're going to weld this. Now, the correct spacing for this piece is a half inch. I've got a piece of half inch tubing. I'm just going to drop in there and slide that in. To sum it up though, the ends of these go down the center of this and that's your correct alignment. Now get your square, square everything up, make sure you cut all your burrs off so that one side's not sitting higher than the other and obviously square your cuts with your chop saw. And there you go, that easy. I wanted to make this easy. All right, so the time has come for the uprights. Now I've already uh, notched them, already showed you how to do that. But I'm gonna show you a little trick. Um, I've marked the center of these, and I've marked the center of these. And I'm just gonna line this up. So now this spacer is centered. Now the rear uprights go back here. And I'm gonna use that as a spacer to set the correct space. Then I'm gonna tack them in and then I'll just move this up and tack it in so I have a solid structure. Um, you obviously have the option of making multiples of all of these pieces to help you with alignment. But that's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to get all four uprights tacked in first, uh, get them as level as I can, and then use the cross members to uh, set everything square to each other. There you have it. That took all of what? Hour and a half, two hours? Not too bad. And I really took my time on this one. Really cleaned up all the edges. Uh, made made sure extra sure that everything was, was super square. Why not? So now you can test it by throwing a piece in there and throwing one of your levels on there. And now, usually I do this during assembly, less than a tenth of a degree less than 10th of a degree. And that could be my garage floor. Like I could turn this and it could be just fine. So that is building a jig. Now we've got our pieces that we extended and you could see that it went together super easy. Uh, this piece is three inch longer. This piece is three inch longer and same with the other side and everything just lined right up. I'm not using my CAD program. I'm just going off my paper plans. So this is a super easy way to extend a chassis for a little bit more room. Uh, now I'm gonna just cut up all the uh, inch and a half and inch and a quarter, start bending it and notching it. And then we're just gonna build the chassis right onto this. See you next time, thanks for watching.